Hi, it's John Taffer from Bar Rescue. Did you know the second building in America was a tavern? When I built my new restaurant franchise concept, Taffer's Tavern, I thought back to the roots of what makes a tavern a tavern. Timeless character. All while delivering an unbelievably delicious food and beverage experience. That paired with my 40 plus years in the industry provides a clear roadmap to success. Do you have what it takes to be a Taffer's Tavern franchisee? If so, I'd love to hear from you. Visit franchise.tafferstavern.com. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with carrier. Products sold separately. Hey, this is Blue State Rob, and you're listening to the Eric Zane Show podcast, a show hosted by a liberal Republican whose ancestry dates back to the small country of Armenia and fueled by bouts of anxiety and adult attention hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. It's not the best, but still better than radio. Anyway, here's your host, Eric Zane. Going to be a mess today. Going to be a mess. This wildly insane cold slash flu. Oh, just killed me over the weekend. Oh, my gosh. Well, it didn't. You know, it could be worse. It could be dead. Questions right off the top. Hey, guys. So did Saul break up with Eric or was it the other way around? <sighs> yeah, I've had some people ask me about that. Uh, a little bit more on the Eric and Saul drama. Uh, Saul has been uh, following for years. Absolutely uh, perfect relationship. Really sweet young man. And has uh, seen all the ups and downs and uh, all the things that I've done on this show. Laughed right along with it. And then he put on his sensitive pants the other day. And uh, the second that uh, I started to screw around with him, he got extremely offended. And, you know, the way this unfolded was, I go, Saul, you're a Jew. I have a Jew question for you. Okay. And then I asked him, uh, like, holy days of the year. I actually asked him a legit question. Now, Jew is a term. He made it seem like I was calling him, if he was a black guy, I was calling him the N-word. And he actually wrote that. He goes, would you call a a black guy the N-word? I go, well, that's absolutely not the same. Uh, What the hell? A flippant cavalier, yes, mean no so you know he uh so that happened and he he wasn't bothered at all by it and then uh we did trivia and one of the questions was where did adolf hitler write mein kampf and uh the answer was prison which i didn't know and i go saul plug your ears you'd want to hear this and then i don't know what the fuck happened because Then the rest of the show, he's smiling, he's laughing. He stayed on the show with us. And then something got in his brain. I don't know if he talked to his folks or they heard it and they said, you shouldn't let him or whatever. I don't know. Maybe he was influenced. Maybe he thought about it too much. 
But then he writes me a Dear John letter. And my response to that was the same as I respond to all of these Dear John letters. There is the door. Go. I don't need this. Sorry. Come on. We're all grown-ups here. Jesus. Um, so I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, J- uh, Jason Mays with the f- uh, funny line, Eric should start a docudrama about his breakups. There've been a lot. There've been a lot of breakups. Um, Jim Brady was a big breakup. Anna was a big breakup. Anna sent me a, uh, a dear John letter. Jim Brady sent me a dear John letter. Um, uh, Tom from Gun Lake. That was a, that was an ugly one. What else was there? Saul. Oh, um, uh, what's the one guy? Bleeding Heart Brian. Oh, Jesus. You fucking bitches. I never got a Dear John letter from Dirk. And I don't even know if he's officially out of the fold. He might just be laying low. I have no idea. But you know where I stand. My message, uh, my, my, my thought has never changed. I just, uh, I just love you all. And if, if, uh, I, I've never, I've never changed up what I do. Okay. And for the most part, it seems to be just fine. You all seem to enjoy it. And that is what, that's what I'm here for. Again, I don't understand what could possibly be the problem. I'm just here speaking my mind. You can, you can come and go as you please. No one is holding you hostage. Megan says, what if Bleeding Heart Brian and Dirk are starting a podcast together? I'd listen. I'll tell you what. I would listen to that. Congratulations, by the way, young lady. Uh, now, 26.3 pounds. Oh, my God. You must keep this going. You are on an absolute smashing roll. Patriot Nick has gifted another tier one sub to another uh, nice person and has done that now 49 times. Okay. Today, thank you, Nick. I appreciate that. Today, I've got the Sam Elliott voice going. I've got the Rob Brandt voice going. And, oh, hang on. I, uh, oh, just a, a steady supply of cold medicine. Uh, and, and it couldn't have come at a worse time. This, uh, this illness that has just been killing me. Wow. The weekend is uh, kind of a blur and I have, I, and, and the thing is I needed to be sharp this weekend and I think I made it through, but, uh, you know, that's kind of like what's been on my brain. Um, getting through this week, I should be okay. We have a relatively short week because we for sure won't be here on th- for Thanksgiving. I won't be doing a Thanksgiving show. Okay, can you imagine how much trouble I'd be in if I did a Thanksgiving show? And it's still up in the air if I'm going to do a Black Friday show. I might, I might not. I might put out a best of show um, for sponsors' sake because I don't like to miss sponsor mentions, you know? They pay for that shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Just a screwed up day today. There's a lot of reasons why. There's a lot of good news and a lot lot of bad news too. First of all, let me me get back to the basics of this show. Uh, It comes to you from the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. That's where I'm at right now. Baldwin Ace uh, Hardware in the Northland of uh, Baldwin, Michigan. If you're up there, uh, drop in and spend some money. Thank you so much to them. The show is live every day on Twitch. I am. Uh, I have a goal of 300 Twitch followers by the end of 2021. As of the start of this show, I was at 248. Now, if you listen to the audio podcast, you know, and you don't bother with Twitch, that's okay. That's totally cool. I get it. But would you please just actually go to twitch.com slash Eric Zane live, all one word, Eric Zane live, and just hit follow. And then you can forget about it. If you know, you're never going to watch. That's fine. As long as you followed, that helps me. It helps me a lot. So, um, 
if you could, if you're listening to the audio podcast, hit follow. And if you're already following, hit the tray at the bottom of the uh, screen there and share it to your friends. Say, hey, Eric Zane is on uh, is on Twitch live right now. Check him out. Helps me out a lot. Thank you so much. The Twitch stream is brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. They're, they are the title sponsor of Twitch. And I have so much great, uh, so many great things going on with them. More on that coming up. All right. I'm in kind of like a weird spot. Where to begin? Because I've got really, really great news and I've got really, really awful news. The awful news is just something that happened that I, I think I should, that I should discuss, you know? So let me start with the great news and then it'll be an awkward transition into the shitty news, okay? The shitty news is nothing personal. The shitty news is the horror that took place in Wisconsin in the last uh, less than 24 hours. I will discuss it. Unbelievable. Hang on, stand. There's going to be a lot of, hey, standbys today because my body is betraying me. Hang on, stand by. Wow. Okay. I'll try to edit those out when I can. Yesterday, excuse me, Saturday was the big day for engagement. All right. Justin is going to ask Jackie to marry him. And uh, I got to, I'm going to give this guy a lot of credit. The preparedness by this young man. He did this all himself. He included everyone. It was a scavenger hunt. He put all of this in motion by himself. And the idea was Jackie goes to all of their important places in the process of their relationship from beginning to end. Or beginning to now. I shouldn't say end. Uh, with various family members giving clues to where the next stop is. And it's all very... It, it's, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure the next stop. But it was just, you know, it's all... People like that these days. They like the uh, uh, process and the ritual. All day affair. So much further than what your old pal Eric Zane did. So much more further along. Take the ring, stick it underneath the pillow on the waterbed. I know that Dinah would always stick her hands underneath it when she would like curl up under the pillow. She felt the ring box. What the? And then I'm, then I'm like laying there. I go, yeah, will you marry me? That's it. There was nothing romantic about it. What an asshole. This was pretty involved. Diana goes and picks up Jackie for they've got some. She, she's invented. So, oh, yeah. Diana invented a, a story about, hey, um, a friend of the family is uh getting into photography and she needs someone other than family members to photograph. So uh, good news. We're getting our pictures taken as a mother daughter. So get yourself all dressed up. So Jackie falls for it. Diana picks her up and then she goes, change the plans. And she, Diana gives her an envelope and it's just clue number one on it. And so she reads it and uh, it has her going to, um, I think it was where they first met and that was Jackie's dorm on the college campus, not far from here. So they get there and Madison is waiting there with clue two and then clue two takes them to a spot. That's like one of their favorite spots. There's this, uh, uh, it's called post family farms nearby here where they, they love the donuts and they would always make like a little, uh, first part of a Sunday or a Saturday, going to post family farms to get the donuts. So they get there. My son, Jim, his wife, Aubrey, or my daughter-in-law, Aubrey, and, and the grandkids are there. And uh, they have they give them donuts and then clue, the next clue. And then the next clue is my house here where 
uh, Justin, in front of me a few Christmases ago, asked her if they if she if she would be his girlfriend. And I remember that it was on a Christmas morning. So Jackie pulls up, and our dog uh, Daisy, right there, has a clue number. The next clue uh, attached to her collar, and Daisy goes waddling up. Stand by. Jackie's crying. I'm raking leaves in the front yard. I go, Jackie, what's going on? I don't know what happened with uh, with Daisy. I woke up and there was a there was an envelope on her on her collar. I don't know what this is, you know. And so she knows this is all obviously going on. She takes the envelope off and it's uh, on to the next location they go. And so ultimately, um, this um, winds up back at a. Uh, local landmark where I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan called the Blue Bridge. Really nice uh, place for pictures and things like that. And um, at that point, um, and by the way, Justin's family was involved. That is his mother and his his aunt or aunt, Aunt Kelly. And then his two cousins are also involved. Various stops. We all congregate at the bridge. Okay, and Diana pulls up the final clue. The final destination is the Blue Bridge. Okay, great. And then, you know, this all went flawlessly. Not a thing went wrong. Justin is waiting there with their dog, Cece, the Frenchie. (coughs) Excuse me. With a uh, little uh, handkerchief or a, 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 what what do you call it? Uh, Not a handkerchief. Um, Little thing around her neck and it says, will you marry my dad? And then uh, Jackie goes walking up. Justin hands the dog to Diana, and then he gets down on one knee. In fact, you probably want to take a look at this. Uh, I've got, uh, that's that's not what I want you to see. That's QAnon Shaman. We're going to talk about him later on. Uh, here, here it is. This is as Jackie's walking up to Justin. Look at that bridge. That's a great looking shot. These two in the background, they have no idea they're in this in this amazing shot. There's Cece. Uh, their, their pal Connor took pictures. And then look at that. Look at that. There's Justin. Spectacular. There's uh there's the happy couple. Look at look at how handsome he is. Look how beautiful she is. Look at the dog. This is like catalog stuff. These two are models. This is they, They're so much better than Diana and I. Well, me, not her. Unbelievable. I was so happy. I started crying. Seriously. I'm like, I was shooting video. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm weeping. Hang on. Oh, my God. Sorry. My face is just betraying me today. So uh, it, it all worked out great. It was fantastic. Stand by again. It's getting so bad that I'm starting to think I should have taken the day off today. Um. So, yeah, very, very cool. It all worked out awesomely. We went out to eat after that. Stand by. Oh, my God. I apologize. My body is betraying me. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, All good. All good in the hood, as they say. Uh, just really enjoyed that. And, um, now, now the planning begins. I don't know if it, I don't think they have a date set yet. I think they're just kind of letting the dust settle on this deal, but, um, fantastic. Um, what, uh, what a thing I, 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 I give uh, Justin a ton of credit. He, he did a fantastic job putting this all together. Um, I said to him, I go, I bet you you're more nervous. You were more nervous this week than you were preparing for the two cpa exams that you had to take he goes oh yeah yeah just you know you're you're just worried that it's all that you know it's all it oh and i guess who almost screwed it up your old pal eric zane 
here's the deal. I um, here's the deal, Exane. <coughs> I had um, Diana says to me, she goes, okay. Um, when it's time to go to the Blue Bridge, you must grab the champagne out of the fridge, and then drive, and that's all you have to do, and then get there. And what did I do? As we're walking up to the Blue Bridge with uh, Justin's mom. And by the way, you might be like, what's happened to Justin's daddy? Justin's daddy passed away when he was very young. Like, I think he was like seven or eight years old. And um, his sweet mother never remarried. She loved him dearly. Uh, and she just, um, there was there was one incredibly touching moment when uh, they were like getting photographs. And all of a sudden you turn around and Justin's mother is weeping. And uh, she goes, this is to signify uh, my late husband, your dad, uh, blessing your marriage or, or something like that. And it was like, oh, my God, this is, this is incredible. Oh, just a very, very spectacular moment. Um, yeah, Justin's daddy was in his 40s when he passed. Really, really uh, dramatically sad. Um, we're walking up to the Blue Bridge. And somebody says the words... That makes me go, <gasps> did you bring the champagne? Oh, no. Oh, shit. Fuck. I did it. I fucked it up. I did. the. I, all I had to do was get dressed and drive there. Bring the champagne. I forgot the champagne. Uh, Jackie and Diana are going to be there in like 15 minutes. We're all getting set. And uh, we have no champagne. We have to have champagne. This is what Justin planned. There's actually a picture of him popping the cork. So... Thank God there's a liquor store right nearby. And I had to, on foot, run over and buy champagne. Worked out. Mm. Holy crap. One job, Eric. One job. Congrats to them. I love you guys very much. Uh, welcome to uh, a future. Welcome to the family officially. Uh, I guess you're welcome to the family now because you're engaged. You... Uh, are my uh, daughter's fiance, Justin. But uh, okay. Excellent. Off we go. Now all of this begins. Um, wedding planners, I, I, I don't know if they're going to do that. Wedding planners, by the way, they're expensive. But my God, I have seen how they take charge. If you want to do it right, you'll have to pay for it. But if you want to do it right, you hire a wedding planner. All the times that I've done limo and I've see, gone to weddings where... <coughs> excuse me, they don't have a wedding planner. I see the bride kind of with a look on her face like she's getting ready to beat the shit out of somebody. Okay? And then comparing that to the look on the bride, uh, on the bride's face when there is a wedding planner, and then the wedding planner looks like that, and the bride's like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Give me some dick and some champagne. Woo, yeah, come on, let's do this. Just seems to be such a... Uh, such a badass boss job to be a wedding planner. Man, and because you are the program director for the wedding, okay? It's really fantastic. We shall see. I don't know. I'm along for the ride. All I do is write checks, okay? All I do is write checks. You know, this is what you prepare for. Daughter's weddings and college. Jim did not go to college. I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, and he chose, well, kind of a different scenario. Jim Jim definitely marched to the beat of his own drummer. And uh, I, I think the rule is the uh, father of the bride pays, right? Isn't that the, I'm, I'm pretty traditional on this. So I'm planning on paying for everything. And if somebody says, hey, uh, I'll take care of the cake. Just happens to offer it. I'll like, ah, eh, you don't have to. If you really want to, that's fine. Um, you know. We'll see. Okay. So that's the good news. That is the sweet story. The bad story is, oh my God, all I wanted to do was see the Santa parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And now, uh, uh, everybody's dead. What the hell? Oh, my God. This is, I don't even know what the hell is going on. I just know that I was uh, uh, wrapping up uh, the evening last night. I start seeing stories about how a uh, Santa parade, Christmas parade or whatever uh, tradition they have in this small town 
in Wisconsin um, is now marred with a tragedy. I'm like, fucking A, is this written house? Is he is he lost his mind again? What the hell? Is this Kyle Rittenhouse behind the wheel now playing a kid and grandma bowling? Holy shit. The people are walking along the parade route. Typical. The band, uh, cheerleaders. There's actually a group called the Dancing Grannies. And some kook behind the wheel of an SUV. You see him. I'm not going to show it. You see him drive through the the wooden barricades, and everybody's like, what the hell is going on? There's another clip of him zooming past the the kids holding the flags, you know? And uh, like a little little toddler is on the side of the road inches, inches away from the kid getting greased. Thing blows by. I did not see any video. I didn't, they, I'm sure it's available if you search for it. Uh, I, I didn't really... Uh, seek it out but at one point then whoever's behind the wheel says all right it's time to go out and blaze the glory and then thud 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 starts driving through people dozens i think there's like 40 or 50 hurt several killed uh, uh mangled marred horror is now uh unfolded in this uh in this community what the fuck is going on you know right away I'm like, okay, what Islamic name, what Muslim name am I going to see attached to this sick son of a bitch? Uh, is this the new type of terror attack? These soft target things. You hear about this from time to time. Soft targets start blowing shit up or driving through people or shooting up a mall or something like that. And I haven't heard. I don't know yet. It hasn't been. Uh, no one knows anything yet. They've. It uh, wouldn't surprise me, but... Uh, Probably not. Let's just hope. I mean, I can't I can't say I hope it's not. I don't know what the fuck. Or is this just a crazy person? Or is this a person who had a medical issue? We don't know. We have no idea. Some cop opened fire as the guy passed. I mean, talk about helpless. Jesus. This is the type of thing that makes you like, well, I mean, I don't even know if I ever want to go outside of the house anymore when shit like this happens. Um absolutely horrible um ambulances just come racing they didn't even have enough ambulances for the amount of injuries this is not a gigantic community but uh just a horrible horrible thing unfolding right now in uh, waukesha wisconsin all right speaking of horrible the detroit lions played again last night yesterday and again, just my God, I, I, every day, every game that, that passes, I can't, how can they be so terrible? They fall to the Browns 13 to 10. I'm really shocked that they're actually able to, um, um, make a game of these, of these, uh, of these games. I mean, they, they made a game of it against Pittsburgh. And then they uh, made a game of it against uh, Cleveland, too. And I, I'm like, how? I think uh, the Cleveland quarterback, Baker Mayfield, he might have been a little nicked. Hell, if the guy was playing on one leg, he'd probably be able to beat the Lions. But Lions are trailing 13 nothing in this game. They give the uh, ball to their running back, uh, I don't even know his name, DeAndre Swift who busts it for 57 yards and a touchdown, makes it a game. 13-7, to 13-6. to six. The, kick, the new kicker, uh, the, they got rid of the one last week, thank God, and made the extra point. Then he kicked the field goal, so it's 13-10. That was it. It's as close as they got. Cleveland sucks. Detroit is absolutely the worst. Their quarterback, they didn't start Goff. Stand by. They started some guy named Tim Boyle, who I have never heard of. He completed 15 passes to 23 attempts for 77 yards and two interceptions. At one point, it was third and 14, and they ran the ball. 
Yeah. This guy, Tim Boyle, I think he, he, Jesus, he played for some small college. I think in one year at college ball, he had one touchdown and 15 interceptions. How is this guy even an NFL quarterback? How is it that the Lions, uh, when Cam Newton was available, why couldn't they have signed Cam Newton? I mean, he's got to be better than Tim Boyle. And I think Cam Newton is kicking ass back with Carolina. I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a salary cap issue. I have no idea. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But the Lions now fall to zero wins, nine losses, and one tie. Boy, that one tie really is bumming me out. I kind of wish they'd go 0 and 17. And again, I'm not I'm not bashing them. I, I love the Lions. And I think that the head coach needs a few drafts, you know, because they got a lot of picks for Matthew Stafford. See how this dude does in a couple. I mean, uh, you get the requisite two and a half years when you're a coach of the Lions, but they play Thursday, Thanksgiving. Oh my God, against the Bears at home. Fuck. This is going to get ugly. Okay, if you live in West Michigan and you listen to the Lions on the radio, you may have noticed this over the past one and a half seasons. If you listen on the radio to uh, uh, Dan Miller and Slomus Brown, that's right, Dan, again, Dan. You may have heard a commercial for an asphalt company called Superior Asphalt. And I remember the times that I've been listening to the radio, and every time I've heard it, I went, oh, my God, this is very bold of them to do this. You hear this guy come on the radio. He's the owner of Superior Asphalt. This is coming out of the speakers, and you'll hear, hello, everybody. He's got a great Michigan accent. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Kresnick. I am the owner and operator of Superior Asphalt. Greetings, West Michigan. I'm deeply sorry to inform you the Detroit Lions will have another disastrous season. This is what he says in the ad. It took the Lions 12 seasons to realize Matthew Stafford was overpaid and could not get them to the top. We at Superior Asphalt have been on top for 38 years in a row. We're the champions of the asphalt industry. Well. Okay. So that's a little weird. And here's why that's weird is because they play that commercial during the Lions game. So like there's a network, there's the Lions network and they and Dan Miller says, all right, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more Lions football after this. And then the local radio stations, in this case, it happens to be, um, uh, 1013 big, what, what do I call it again? Big 101.3. I can't remember the, my, the radio station I work on. Big one one point three carries the games. So then as soon as Dan Miller says that, it goes to the local station, which then that ad plays. Well, the Lions found out about that finally, and they got pissed. Now, they have been known to pull affiliations. What that means is if they suddenly say, because what happens is radio stations in like places like Grand Rapids, they like fight tooth and nail to get the affiliation because they know Though they suck, everybody listens to the Lions games. If they're listening, if the radio is on, it's on the Lions game. I should say, if people aren't watching, they're listening. So you really get a big boost in listenership. But the Lions have been known to, when they're pissed off, to yank affiliations. So that means my boss has his, he's got, the Lions have a red ass. My boss, Tim, is hearing it from them saying, what the fuck are you doing there in Grand Rapids? And he's like, oh, oh, I, oh, I don't, oh, I, I, I don't know. So what they did was the Lions said, all right, you got to stop using that. And, but they didn't. What happened was, I guess it was a little bit more involved in that. The Lions had a problem with the fact that uh, the term Lions is trademarked. So you can't use Lions in the ad. Now, I don't know if the stupid ass Lions thought that that was a way to get the ad from stopping to be played, but it's not because the guy just took his advertisement from the asphalt company 
And every time he says lions, you hear a stupid slide whistle. Hello, I'm Jeff. I'm Chris. What's his name? Jeff Kresnick. I'm Jeff Krasnick from Superior Asphalt. The Detroit have sucked for 12, uh, 12, 55 years, whatever the fuck he says. Oh, my God. So now it just sounds even more ridiculous. Everybody knows what he says. Jesus. If you're the Lions, you got you to gotta go hard against the, and say, no, you either quit playing that fucking ad or you're out. But they didn't do that. So, Jesus. Um, this guy, Jeff Krasnick was interviewed. Uh, he writes, it, it, the story says it doesn't just, it doesn't end with just radio ads for Kresnick, a fan of the Packers. Of course, he's an asshole Packers fan. Shit. <coughs> I wonder if I can get these guys <coughs> on the podcast. I should call them right now. Superior. I spelled superior. How could you spell superior wrong? If you're him, if you're Kresnick, this is a this is a win because hold on S U P Superior Asphalt. I can't talk and then type at the same time. Okay, they're open right now. This is a win for fucking Kresnick because uh, everybody's talking about him. So this is absolutely perfect. Good morning, Superior Asphalt. Hi, ma'am. Is Jeff in? No, he's not. Is there a message I can take? Well, this is kind of urgent. I'm I'm doing a live podcast right now. My name okay. is My name is Eric Zane from the Eric Zane Show podcast. And, oh yeah, and Jeff. Familiar? Yeah, thank you. And that's well, that's the first time anybody's ever said that. <laughs> um, Jeff, Jeff is like all over the news right now with his ad on the radio. Okay. With the uh, with the Superior Asphalt ad, making fun of the Detroit Lions. Yeah. So, I I really want to talk to him. Is there any way you can like put a message in or something like that? Absolutely. I will try and get in touch with him. I know that he is out of town right now, oh. but I will try to get in touch with him. Is there a number that he can reach you at? Well, yeah, but if I give it out, then everybody in the audience is going to get my number. You know what I mean? I'm doing it live. Okay. So, you know, um, is it, is it, it's not showing up on your phone right now? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, there it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Let me put you on hold for just a moment, okay? Okay, thank you. Thanks. I appreciate that. See how we figured that out? That's problem solving right there. This is Jeff Krasnick from Superior Asphalt. I'm telling you, if we get him on, you're going to think, Jesus, Zane, you nailed it. Michigan State. Let me uh, park on Michigan State for a second before we get Jeff on. Hopefully we'll get Jeff on. How the fuck can you destroy Michigan the way you did, beat Michigan, and then do nothing after that? Think about where you were just a handful of weeks ago. You were riding high. You beat Michigan. You, you again, uh, rubbed their nose and shit. Kenneth Walker leading the Heisman charge. And then two out of the next three weeks are a disaster. You bomb against Purdue, you idiots. And then Ohio State destroys you. What? All right, I apologize for the hold. He is not picking up. Oh, okay. Well, you have my number. If I you do. could just drop it, like just send him a text, say Eric Zane wants to talk to you. Here's his number. And then he can call me whenever, like hopefully like right away, because <laughs> I'm doing the podcast till like 10 a.m. All right. I will make sure he gets the message. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Oops. Um, okay, let me... So Michigan State, seriously. I, you know, I was, um, I was sitting right here and I go, oh, you know, the game's like about a quarter 
a quarter into it, quarter and a half. I go, I'll just check it out. I, I don't like to get too heavily invested in these, in these things. Um, I haven't sat down to watch a game, college or pro, yet this year. But I follow all this shit, okay? I love the storylines. But, you know, I want the Spartans to win. I want Michigan to win. I can't stand Ohio State. I don't have a rooting interest uh, one way or another in between Michigan and Michigan State. But, you know, I like the state teams to win. I like people around me to feel good, okay? When I see guy at the uh, store wearing the Spartan hat, I say go green to him. If I see Michigan guy in his monster truck with truck nuts and a let's go Brandon flag, I say go blue. I'm all about it. I like you happy. It was 35 to nothing when I turned it on. And I went, oh, well, that's that. And I shut it off. And then I see 49 to zero at the half. Oh, what a bunch of fucks. Like, it was at that point that I'm like, well, if you're Ohio State, do not let up. Humiliate them. And then instantly I become an Ohio State fan. I'm like, go for a hundred, make it uh, ninety, either ninety-eight to nothing or one hundred and whatever, hundred and five to nothing. Oh, you gotta go for a hundred. And then the Spartans manage a shitty touchdown. It ends up being fifty-six to seven. How sickening is that, you fucks? Right after Mel Tucker gets nine years and like $80 billion, you pieces of shit. (laughs) Oh my God. What a bunch of assholes. I can't figure out. I mean, well, if you were to compare, the Lions hung in there. The Lions' defense is pretty was pretty stout. The running game is good. Panay Sewell, there was a... By the way, there was a, like a yo mama joke, apparently, that got the Lions penalized at some point in they, that game. We had yo mama jokes for the Lions. Stout defense, good running game. We had a, a quarterback who couldn't even have uh, coached Hudsonville High School for the Lions. But they hung in there against, uh, against the Browns on the road. And Michigan State, you... Bunch of fucks, you dicks. <laughs> Holy shit. Now you're going to go to the shithead bowl. Oh, <laughs> jeez, you idiots. You suck so much dick. <sighs> you have somehow uh, 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 taken the term little brother, which you shed it again. This is how you operate. You Michigan State fucks. You shed the whole little brother thing. You're like, get the fuck off me. Fuck off me, little brother. You kick Michigan's ass. And you're like, yeah, yeah. And then like three weeks later, you're like, oh, we're bitches again. <laughs> Our goal is to be a bitch. Look at you bitches. Oh. You have, because of what you've done, you have forced the little brother slogan to be back on you despite you beating big brother. How? Yeah. You had a perfect opportunity to be to stand tall. If you would have beaten Ohio state. Okay. It's bad enough that you fucked it up on the road at Purdue. Okay. But you still controlled your own destiny. You beat Ohio state and then you win the big 10 championship. Uh, you're going to be in the playoffs. Oh, horrible. Well, see you later. It was nice knowing you for the year. Now, that leaves Michigan and Ohio State. There is no fucking way Michigan is going to beat Ohio State. No way, 
know how. I do not believe that that is going to happen. I would be pleasantly surprised, and I am going to root for Michigan. I would love for Michigan to beat Ohio State. I am sick of Ohio State. And the fact that Ohio State started out the year losing uh, to Oregon, and I'm like, oh, thank God. You know, wait a minute. Did they lose to Oregon? Who did Ohio State lose to this year? I don't even know. I shouldn't act like I know. Anyway, um, Michigan, I, I just don't see that happening. Maybe if Michigan does win, okay, Michigan needed uh, Ohio State to beat Michigan State because that gives them a puncher's chance, 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 excuse me, chance to get to the uh, playoffs because if they beat Ohio State, okay, then all they got to do is win the Big Ten Championship, the Big Ten Championship game, and then uh, they're in. They are in. Now, whether or not they have uh, the, uh, I don't think they would have the horses to uh, beat Georgia or Alabama or I guess Cincinnati. Are we looking at Cincinnati now after Oregon loses again this week? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wings guy 71 says Michigan is going to get jail sexed this week. Yes, I guess Oregon did beat Ohio State. Kyle says uh, you are correct, but they will not win. You are correct, they will not win. Hopefully it's a close game, though. Uh, Terry says they are going to get beat down just as badly. Kyle says Cincy versus Ohio State will be called the shit bull since the state of Ohio is a shithole. That's horrible. It's a horrible thing to say right there, Kyle. You can't say you hate Ohio State when just five minutes ago you were claiming to cheer for them. No, 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 no. Hold on a second here. You see, you missed it. I said I claimed to cheer for Ohio. I was cheering for Ohio State. When it was 49 to nothing, Ohio State. Then I'm like, yeah, now you go for it. Now you go for 100. And don't tell me what I can and can't do. I can do whatever the fuck I want. You're not the boss of me. And then JDB3304. I don't know who the fuck that is. I can't remember. Says that Michigan is going to beat Ohio State. You get, you're nuts. You are absolutely nuts. Do you know how much they're paying those players at Ohio State? I probably won't watch a bit of it. But I'm really, really interested. Great storylines. No, I, I, I'll, I'll watch that. I, at least until it's like 28 nothing Ohio State. All right. Whew. The uh, Open is brought to you by Johnson's Carpet One. Back on the podcast. Okay. This has been a long time coming. Now, Kent dropped the E out of you. He works for Johnson's Carpet One in Granville, Michigan. This is our first day of a six-month marketing plan with Johnson's. Thank you to Darwin. This is one of the busiest men in America right here because... Um, I cannot tell you how many times I have been banging on this guy's door. Darwin, we got to get you back on the podcast. Got to get you back on the podcast because he was for a period of time at Johnson's Carpet One. Anything you need flooring wise, this is where you get it. Either at the uh, outlet where uh, uh, Kent works or at the main store right on Chicago Drive. Both on Chicago Drive, actually, but just down the street from each other. You can't miss it. Um, so for the longest time, I've been like talking about Bennett flooring installation, have them install it. Well, you got to buy some type of flooring. Okay. It could be carpeting, could be a uh, vinyl plank, could be tile, whatever. You're going to get it now at Johnson's carpet one in Granville, Michigan. Now, again, we're just getting started on a six month marketing campaign, but we will come up with a way for you to go there and say, hey, I heard it on the Eric Zane Show podcast, and you're going to get a discount. But we're just getting started on that, so I don't have that in place yet, but we will. 
But I wanted to start beating the drum for them now. Johnson's Carpet One in Granville, Michigan. In fact, their website, if you want to check this out for yourself, you just go to Johnson Carpet One Granville.com. Johnson Carpet One Granville.com. Um, back on the show. I'm so happy to have them back. So when it comes to flooring, and we talk about that a lot on this show, uh, you buy it from Johnson Carpet One in Granville, Michigan, and then you call it on Bennett Flooring Installation. They will install what you buy. Thank you very much. I'm so happy that they are back on the show. Um, the story goes with them. Back um, in the radio days, they sponsored a Free Beer and Hot Wings live show back when um, they would do the like the live show in town and stuff like that. And I was like, God, I got to get them on. So as soon as I saw that Johnson's Carpet One was sponsoring it, I started the phone process. It's take, it took that long to get them on to the podcast. And then I got fired. Then I started the podcast, kept calling, kept calling, kept calling. Finally got the meeting. Once I got the meeting, I finally made inroads. Got them on the podcast. Pandemic. Oh, no. The business shuts down for a period of time. Darwin, who runs the show over there, he was a worker bee at the time, but he was in charge of buying the ads. He then scrapes his money together and buys the business from the family. He bought the place. So I'm like, you mean you're the guy calling the shots now? I mean, you you make all decisions. He goes, yeah, I'm the big swinging dick here. I go, Jesus. All right, well, it's time. And then, like, he went dark. He went radio silent. I'm like, you fucker. Come on, Darwin. And I was just, oh, banging my head against the wall for the longest time trying to get this guy back on. And finally, we made it happen. We made it happen. Thank you, Darwin. I appreciate you so much. Stand by. I need a drink. So when you go to see Kent, drop the E out of the out of you at the outlet place, Johnson's Carpet uh, One Outlet Place. Mention that you heard it here. I have taken so much medicine in the past two days. And uh, it's Vicks Dayquil NyQuil, which, wow, does that stuff knock me out. Stand by again. I've taken so much of it that I ran out. And I go to the store yesterday to get more. And in the whole giant medicine aisle, there's one lady there with a shopping cart right in front of what I want to buy. And she's standing there, and I think she's reading the uh, fine print on every package. And I'm like, dude, just get out of the fucking way. So I'm standing there, and I don't want to say excuse me. I just like, be patient, you know. She'll be gone. If I stood there for like five minutes and she never did move. And I'm like, my God, lady, you are breaking all sorts of etiquette here. I, I, uh, I have a, um, whenever I'm in a store like that, you take the cart and you move it away from you because you plus cart occupies too much space. Just cart moved away. Doesn't just you separate from the cart. Doesn't come on. Think about others. I finally go, I go, oh, I'm so sorry. Can I squeeze in here? Just maybe grab, I see exactly what I want. She's like, oh, yeah, okay, fine. I get the thing. <sighs> Off I go. Oh, Jesus. Okay, where was I? How far are we into this? Almost an hour? All right, not bad. Uh, thank you again to Joe Martinez. A&E, uh, heating and cooling. Okay, get your furnace serviced. You've heard this before on the show, and you haven't listened to me. You're running a risk of that thing breaking down. Furnaces are pretty, uh, if, if Joe takes a look at a furnace, he can tell, oh boy, you haven't gotten this cleaned in forever. You're rolling the dice. The second these sensors and shit start to get dirty, you know, all these different sensors on your furnace, uh, tell it when to go on and off, stuff like that, and... Uh, it's a pretty fine piece of machinery, that contraption that keeps you warm. 
And you know how much trouble you're going to be in if on Sunday morning at uh, 4 a.m. when the house is 16 degrees and your wife had plans to get up and make uh, pancakes and uh, eggs and bacon for you, how pissed off she's going to be at you because you didn't get that thing serviced. Don't be that idiot. It's just going to set you back 79 bucks. You get to see Joe Martinez or one of his fine, young, handsome employees that work for him, also known as son-in-laws. And uh, he's going to clean that thing out for $79. 616-516-8579. If you can't remember that, just remember A and E, heating and cooling. Either look it up, go to my website, click on the logo. This is very simple. Or even email me if you're that guy, and I'll direct you to the right place to go. 79 bucks. Get that thing tuned up. Thank you to Blue Frost IT. Let's say you have a small or medium-sized business. Six or seven workstations. Bunch of employees all there working hard in their little cubicles. Uh, if there's a tech issue, how's that going to be repaired? Time is money. Everything's going to go kaput. Wouldn't it be great to have your own tech team on top of it? That's what uh, Blue Frost IT is all about. Call uh, at uh, 616-285-50 or email info at bluefrostit.com for details on that. Or if you're looking to upgrade that same business because your tech is slow and old and terrible and your employees hate you, uh, don't just go buy stuff off the shelf. Sit down with a pro who, after you describe to that pro, and that would be the folks at Blue Frost IT, what your business does, oh, okay, you're going to need this, this, and this, and this, and this. You might underbuy if you do it on your own or overbuy stuff you don't need. You need to sit down with Blue Frost IT for a complimentary consultation. 616-285-50 or online at info or send an email info at bluefrostit.com. Hang on, I need a drink. Oh, my God. I see a pee break in my future, by the way. Some of you like, get to the Pistons brawl. Get to the Pistons brawl. Oh, I'm going to get to the Pistons brawl. We had a moment last night. Ooh. Cannot wait to talk to that. Talk about that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I'm now looking at the comments. What? Kenny writes, wives get up at 4 a.m. and cook their families pancakes and eggs and bacon. Well, what I meant by that was it's so cold because it's 16 degrees, they get up at 4 a.m. You know, I don't think they really get up at 4 a.m. to make eggs and bacon. Um. Uh, Sarah says, I'll drop off a bunch of cold meds from Perigo. Don't do that. No, no. Don't do that. That's okay. I've got plenty. I've got everything I need here. You, It's okay. I appreciate that very much. You're very, very kind. You know, it's going to be okay. Also, did you hear about the 80, the 80 people that... 80-person uh, mob... Storms of California Nordstrom. The latest in a series of high-end store robberies. You know, you've heard about flash mobs? Where people, like, uh, suddenly show up and start dancing? Well, the latest thing is these assholes will drive up to a store and everybody rushes out of their vehicles, runs in and grabs shit, and then runs out. They're all, like, their identities are concealed. Rob mobs. Yeah, that's another term for it. Well, that happened over the weekend. And what a holy shit. They ended up catching a few of them. And and I the first thing I thought of, you know where this would never happen is Honduras. My God. 
If you go to a gas station, there's two guys with AKs in front of the place. Security. Hired security. Everywhere. Because crime is such a problem there. We are going to get to that point. I can only hope that that happens. You would never see a flash mob if there was an armed guard in front of the store. Holy shit. These assholes run in there, steal whatever the fuck they want, and then they get out. Jeez. Uh, apparently, there's a, uh, a tr- there's trouble with the law in, in California, and I haven't read up on it, but um, there is uh, that Nick wrote, as long as it's under $1,000, who cares? That's part of their law. And I've, I've been hearing rumblings of, I mean, I don't know California law. But I think that that is the case, that there's something there that there is very little penalty if you steal something under $1,000. My God, I cannot believe people. Jesus. Well, if that's the law they made, people are going to break that law then. People are assholes. But hey, that's what you wanted, right? You put that law in place, you stupid bastards. Jesus. It pays to be a criminal in California. Is anyone shocked? No, not at all. Not at all. All right. I wasn't even going to talk about that. How the hell did I get to that? Oh, okay. Speaking of flooring, listen to this. I promised you I was going to announce the recipient of the Bennett Flooring Floor Giveaway. <laughs> oh, my God. Many uh, of you, I had, I had several people email in, and um, and that's not easy to do, to swallow your pride and say, you know what, um, we're in a bit of a uh, conundrum here. We don't have any money, and we would love a new flooring install from Bennett Flooring Installation. This might be just the thing we need to uh, pick up our spirits. And um, yesterday I talked about, or last week I talked about, uh, uh, Bennett Flooring Installation said one is not enough. He's going to do two. Jacob and Jason, actually not not just one person. Jacob and Jason are doing two flooring installs up to $1,500. So I encourage you to send in emails about um, why you should be the recipient. And I know it's difficult to say, but do it. Let it fly. Let me know. Fill me in on the details. Or if you're nominating someone, you're more than welcome to do that too. You can nominate yourself or someone that you know or love. No problem. I'm going to keep this anonymous, of course, uh, when I'm reading this. But we do have a recipient right now. And for those people who also send in uh, send in emails, um, they will be included in this next one that I'll uh, that uh, Jacob and Jason will give away closer to Christmas, and I'll keep the email communication open. If you are just now hearing about this and think, "Hey, man, you know, shit sucks for us," and I'm going to tell Eric Zane why it sucks right now, send me an email. If you are in Michigan, okay, that's the only catch. You got to be in Michigan because Jacob and Jason can't travel that far away but they said that they will travel anywhere in the state of michigan i go west michigan they go no anywhere in michigan like okay it's up to you so this is uh, from the kindness of their heart don't be shy if you fall into this category uh send an email okay this sweet soul wrote this hello eric i hate to ask But can you please add our family to the Bennett flooring installation giveaway? Our living room carpet is in extremely bad shape and we have been hoping to get it, uh, get it replaced. But the last few years, it's been difficult to find any time to attempt to do it ourselves between our home being a 1999 uh, modular home, mobile home and seeing multiple years of wear and tear few pets, multiple children, including our foster children, have worn a heavy path into the once semi-plush carpeting. Uh, We know we need something pet-friendly and something that will hold up to the extra wear that our child's 
wheelchair will put on it. My wife has been asking me to put in laminate flooring, but I'd like something that dampens sound better and something that will hold up to all the abnormal wear and abuse that the family puts on it for the reasons described above. Thank you for the consideration. As always, love you guys. And this soul is, oh my God. Well, you're all fantastic. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. We've got a very tightly knit community um, who, I mean, you're the absolute best. And uh, I, I can't think of anybody better than this. They've, they were all wonderful, wonderful emails. Um, when I say wonderful, I mean like to be recipients. Um, there's a lot of hardship in a lot of these. And uh, I, Jesus, I can't stress enough how much I wish every single one of them could be a recipient. But we're going to go with that one and then keep it open uh, for the uh, back half of this promotion. This uh, giving, if you will with Bennett Flooring Installation. So send those along. I would love to hear from you, okay? Not the easiest thing in the world to have to choose, but I think we made the right choice there. All right. So I will send that information off to Bennett Flooring Installation, and then um, you can, um, there you go. You have a a new flooring setup coming your way uh, from Jacob and Jason. I'm just the mouthpiece for this. I take no credit for this at all. All right. Now, on to more uh, things similar. We are also, at this time of year, doing the Great Food Giveaway, number two. Great Food Giveaway, the history of this was, it was right after the um, kidney donation, and... Denny Porter, if you remember from A&D Cleaning, uh, Amy is Denny's better half. She has that cleaning business. Well, Denny said, you should do a food giveaway. And uh, then uh, I, I don't know what the hell came over me. I think it was, uh, it had something to do with, with the kidney giveaway. It's like, you know, let's let, let's do that. And there was a lot of suggestions and you guys, yeah, a lot of this shit is you guys prodding me. You know, hey, are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? You know, and, that, and I, I'm glad you do that because I kind of get wrapped up in all the shit of the day-to-day operations of the podcast. Uh, too often, uh, stuff would fall through the cracks. Be honest with you, this may have. Had someone not said, hey, you do it. I think it was Mike Ball or, and, uh, and, and Megan. We doing it? We doing it? We doing it? I'm like, uh, well, now I'm, I've got the spirit. Now, I mean, it's, it's yes. So thank God you did that. Don't ever stop doing that. Um, so that's last this, uh, not this. So one year ago, and it was, like I said, almost mid-December. And we, while I was in California, we started putting the, the plans in place for this while we, I was recovering from the surgery. And it came together pretty quick. A gentleman by the name of Josh at the Jenison Meyer um, was quick to act. And get me uh, start to uh, moving all the various pieces into place to make this happen. This year, a little bit more lead up time. That was good. He reached out to me and uh, he says, yeah, we got some logistic issues because of supply chain trouble. But what are you thinking? I go, well, we again want to feed 100 families. I'm going to keep it simple. Just keep it at 100. Last year, we did the same thing. I'm going to feed 100 families, Josh. Um. Cans of corn, jars of gravy, potatoes, pie. Not since flying reindeer have the holidays seen something so amazing. Just in time to make selfie-ready holiday hair easy. Introducing the do-it-all styling tools for glam holiday hair. The holidays are happier with glam hair. And the Not Doctor all-in-one dryer brushes from Conair makes it easy. Detangle, dry, and style in one step. No elf needed. The Not Doctor collection has a dryer brush for every hair type and style. The Pink Smoothing Paddle dryer brush has flexible light bristles for painless detangling and high performance power for quick styling 
drying and smooth, shiny results. And the Purple Dryer Brush comes with a bonus volumizing attachment to boost lift and volume at the roots. It's perfect for salon blowouts at home. And since they're ideal for every hair type and length, they make great gifts for everyone on your list who wants beautiful hair without the hassles. Shop the Not Doctor Dryer Brushes at Conair.com or at your favorite retailers now. Ham. That's a th- that is a Christmas meal for 100 And he goes, I don't know. I go, what do you mean? He goes, there's a couple things that are making that difficult. But then he reaches out. Last week, he goes, it's good. We are all set. And I'm like, okay, excellent. I love to hear that. So then um, I talk to you about it. So what we do then is we get together on what will be the day before Christmas Eve. It will be Thursday, December 23rd at Irvine's Auto Repair Grand Rapids Hybrid. Whoever wants to go shows up and helps us because we're going to need help putting all this food into boxes. Mike Ball and I are going to have the food loaded up. We're going to have we're going to need help getting all this uh, secured and ready to go. And then people pull up. We put the uh, the, the food in their cars. Uh, Santa Pellerito is on the corner. Uh, Sarah Rukrak Rush is screaming at cars to turn to go get free food. So um, there you go. That's how we do it. Um, it is a 1 million percent grassroots operation. The way we did it last year to pay for it was, um, basically you put the money in my PayPal or my Venmo. I take that money and buy the food that Josh has set aside for us. Okay. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but I reached out to Josh and I go, what will the cost of this be? What is the goal that I will have this, uh, the uh, Zaniacs raise? Okay, here's the breakdown. 100 cans of corn, 49 cents. That's $49. Gravy, 99 cents a jar. That is uh, 99 bucks. Uh, Jesus, he didn't include the potatoes. The pies, $4.99 a piece. That's $499 for pies. Rolls, $3.66. Ham, $21 a ham. That's $2,100 for the ham. Um, He didn't price out potatoes, so I will get that. I can't imagine how much more that's going to cost. Probably another $150. But as of right now, that total is $3,130. So, this is what we do then. Um, we work together, and I will. Uh, uh, we I haven't uh, talked anything about this yet, but uh, we will raise pool our money. Uh, me, you, whoever, uh, silent partners, not so silent partners, doesn't matter. Um. Reach out to me and drop some uh, cash in the bucket. Venmo. Um, you can do it this way. Let me just spell it. At Eric dash Z E I T U N I A N. That's my last name. At Eric dash Z E I T U N I A N. I mean, let me put that up there, Eric. Hold on. So you can have it. Okay. Put the comment up on the live stream. Venmo, three fifty a bag of potatoes. Holy shit. Anyway, we're gonna need some cash. Uh, that's my Venmo. And then PayPal at Eric Zane show. PayPal equals at Eric Zane show. Now you might be like, Oh God, I'm just throwing money at, at Eric Zane's accounts. That goes right to my bank. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, and then I've, uh, the way I do this is I take the receipt 
of when we cash out, when we buy all this food, okay? And then I pay for it, and um, I take uh, a snapshot, a screenshot of the money that came into Venmo and PayPal and total that up. Let's say it totals $5,000. Then I pay for the groceries, and then whatever is left over that amount, I make a contribution to a local organization called Kids Food Basket, and then they get the rest of your donation. So that's how we do it. I'm sure we'll have, uh, like we were able to um, uh, raise a ton of cash really, really quickly last year. I think it was like two or three days we had the money raised. It was just fantastic. You guys are the absolute joys, our absolute joys to work with, and it is so fantastic. So to be there uh, volunteering too, Thank you, Patriot Nick. I see you. Nick just dropped 150 bucks in there. Thank you, buddy. Yes, I did get it. We live in the future. Here I am communicating with you via the internet, and and money's changing hands to give to give away food to uh, underprivileged people. You guys are the absolute shit. I want you to know that. Holy fuck! So there you go. Off we go. Uh, Venmo again. At Eric dash Z E I T U N I A N. I know it's a funky last name, but that's my real last name. That that's that's my Venmo. Uh, and then at Eric Zane Show on PayPal. If you want to give to those, and then all of that money goes to people who need it the most, who will struggle to eat an appropriate meal for Christmas. Okay. Terry says, thank you for the breakdown. I'm always questioning your integrity. Shut up. How's your better half? How's she feeling? Is she okay? You missed it at paintball last night. Oh, my God. It was fantastic. O'Neal's in the shot. O'Neal, say hi to Stevie. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on up. Come here. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. Oh, there he is. You gotta say hi to Steve. Hi, on. Oh, here. Look at him. Look at that dog. Oh my God, he's the absolute best. All right, I gotta take a pee, folks. All right, don't go anywhere. It's intermission time. Eric's got a tinkle. What's up? Just took some more Dayquil. Queen of the forest complaining of sniffles now. I go, oh, man, I hope it isn't, isn't as bad as mine was. This, was. this one kicked my ass. Kicked my ass. Uh, thank you to Nate Bull in Grand Haven. This dude is, oh, my God. He has always been just so spectacular. He just um, sent along... Uh, 200 bucks. Let's see here. Hold on. Everybody's reaching out to me now. Oh my God. All at once. Mitchell sent along 25 bucks. You are the man. Nate, 200. We already have $375. No worries. Dot, dot, dot. But I'm about to sing your praises. Period. I'm so proud of you. Period. Well done. Period. I will send you the audio, period. Okay. Back when I was on the radio on GRD, this uh, college graduate um, joined as an intern. Actually, she wasn't even done with school. And kind of sassy, smart ass, really outgoing, you know, fit in well. Um, also I hit it off because she's a runner, really strong cross country runner for Ferris. And, uh, he had a real deep voice, real deep, deep, deep voice. Referred to her as Jackie man voice. Yeah. Jackie man voice. And, uh, we used to bust her balls all the time and she hung with the boys. And then, uh, as we got to know her, we found out that she um, 
had always been involved in pageants. So, you know, like uh, typical uh, interviews, swimsuit, uh, evening wear. Uh, you have to be um, involved uh, with a lot of like groups and philanthropic uh, things like that. You know, typical, like you might see like uh, Miss America or something like that. And uh, so then she worked her way through the radio station and got uh, started to actually work on the radio, you know. And uh, then uh, she went to TV in our town here. And then I were, went over. Oh, Jesus, my phone is just on fire. I'm, I've got it off. Do not disturb because I'm waiting for the guy from Superior Asphalt to call me. Anyway. So she's working at a TV station. I'm working at uh, Cumulus in Grand Rapids. And then um, uh, the boss at the time, uh, Jeff, Jeff Cartwright, says to me, uh, hey, buddy, uh, what about Jackie Green? We'd like to get her on the air. And I go, okay, maybe, uh, maybe she can work here. And so I reached out to her. She ended up getting a job uh, at the radio station in, uh, in Gra- at, at Cumulus Hot FM. And then uh, she kind of worked her way up there. Now she does mornings. Uh, with Rachel, so it's gray and green in the morning on Hot FM. All the while, Jackie, ha- um, she got married to this nice dude named Jimmy, and uh, then she had this really real moment when she revealed to the world something that I had never heard of. Uh, she is what's described as intersexed, and what that is is um, when she was. Uh, uh, born she had um she didn't have like um the necessary reproductive organs to to have a baby in fact i believe i think i'm i don't think i'm getting this wrong i think she actually had um something that makes it almost like uh there's testicles inside of her body and i know it sounds fucked up but um there it's I, i'm probably getting some of this wrong but the reason why I'm bringing that up is because she uh, kind of came out with it as almost like an advocate for it, intersex person, which, again, I had never heard of. She was the first person I'd ever heard that from. In fact, being totally honest, um, I thought that, the I mean, you had heard stories about Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis has a dong. I think Jamie Lee Curtis might have something to do with this. She doesn't have a penis, Jamie Lee Curtis, nor does Jackie. But uh, anyway, she went on to become a great friend. She still is to this day. And um, but she actually had to have a surrogate. I believe it was her sister, Carrie, her baby. And then they had a beautiful little girl named Greenlee. And all is good. Okay, Jackie keeps doing pageants. Well, recently she won. She won Mrs. Michigan. Which is pretty cool, you know. You know somebody who won. Now this is uh, it's not Miss Michigan. It's 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 moms. It's uh, married women, you know. Um, and uh, so that's it. Pretty big, pretty big deal. She goes to the nationwide thing and wins that. She just she is Mrs. America. Yes, Jackie is Mrs. America. Holy shit! The intern. From my old show has just won Mrs. America. And I think now she gets to go to like Mrs. World or Mrs. Universe or some shit like that. Oh my God. Fucking A. That is incredible. So um, after leaving Cumulus, she's one of the folks that I I actually still communicate. I still communicate with Rachel. I still uh, communicate with Jackie. communicate with Michelle, Travis. Fuck Gates. He's a piece of shit. But uh, that's about it over there. And Bran, I'll, I'll talk to Bran too, but the rest of them go fuck themselves. But uh, it's actually a lot. I actually have a lot of people that I like over there. So then I reach out to her. I go, Jackie, you got you to gotta come on the show. And uh, I said, it's on Twitch. Lori will never know. She doesn't even know what Twitch is. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't respond yesterday. I'm overwhelmed. Unfortunately, Lori would legit kill me. <laughs> So I'm going to have to pass. And I go, don't even worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. I will send you the audio. You're a sweetheart. Congrats. That is, I mean, she's fucking Miss, Mrs. America. Oh, my God. You probably want to see what the hell she looks like, right? What, uh, you know, because like, I think she she posted something. Okay, yeah, let's do that. 
Let me share with you some of the uh, some of the details of the big thing. Holy shit! Okay, give me a second here. I'm getting better at switching over to video. Okay, there it is. Now give me a second, and I'll I'll show you. Okay, so here's Jack in her swimsuit. She's like, "Oh, hey, how you doing?" It looks like a million dollars, of course. Makeup perfect. Look at her, so together in shape. No nasty jokes, please. No nasty jokes. Here's the, she's just like a Spartan. Spartan. She's really into like cosplay and stuff like that. So she's really good at these types of costumes. Oh my God. That is spectacular. And then look at this. Here she is. Here she is. Let me get the audio from this. Michigan, Jackie Blankenship. has run 5,000 miles in the last two years. Yeah. As a former wow. collegiate runner, Jackie and her husband have run those miles for a good cause, raising more than $50,000 for organizations like Kids Food Basket, the AT Children's Project, the American Lung Association, and the Purple Community. Jackie, her husband, and her young daughter brag that they are the family that run together on every holiday. Yes! All the, all the other chicks like, fuck. Oh, we're fucked. Shit. We've got no chance. This is terrible. We, we hate that bitch. Ah! Oh my God. Kyle. Kyle writes, I think it was a sympathy vote since she wore Spartan gear. They felt bad since MSU lost so bad. <laughs> what an asshole. Oh, my God. Congrats, Jackie. Good job. That is, uh, I mean, that's a, I mean, just putting your mind to something and winning on such a grand scale is fucking sweet. Holy shit. Incredible. Well, anyway, Jackie's got a radio show. She does it with Rachel on 105.3 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, they do a great job. Fantastic. Well done. Great work. Jesus. She is Mrs. America. I know Mrs. America, guys. Holy shit. All right. Chris says you can put my trivia winnings toward the grocery bill. Are you serious? Oh, my God. Chris K., just one smarter than a former drug dealer trivia last week. $75. He throws it towards there. That is sweet, dude. Uh, Kyle also adds, he's picking on Jackie about her Spartan gear. He writes, I listen to their show in the mornings before this show. It's a great show. It's funny and no around the room segments. Wow. Well, I don't know why they wouldn't do around the room. That is a... Uh, that is a great, great segment. Oh, my God. Terry, what the fuck? What the hell are you doing with that comment? Boy, there's a lot of people that are uh, down with that show. Marcy writes, they post an after show podcast every day. Wings guy 71 says it's the only morning show in Grand Rapids worth listening to. Oh, my God. You guys are killing it. Who knew you were all, that this show shares audience with uh, Gray and Green on uh, uh, Hot FM 105.3 locally? There you go. Something to listen to. Okay. Where am I? Why am I here? Oh, the Pistons brawl. Okay, we'll get to the Pistons brawl in a second. Stand by. I need a drink. Um, this clip starts, no, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me do this. Uh, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke mortgage invites you to reach out to them. If you need a mortgage NMLS number 3035. Look, these low interest rates are not going to last forever. Okay. Um, you need to be thinking about this. 
with these low interest rates, let's say you're paying a certain amount for a 30 year fixed at uh, 3.8, which isn't a terrible rate. It's not bad. If you can swing an extra two, three hundred dollars a month, wouldn't that be great to take that and make it a 15 year mortgage as opposed to a 30? Okay, here's how this works. Because you can get a super low interest rate if your credit is right. I don't know, 2.65, 2.7 for 15 years. And yeah, your payment will go up a bit, but not the same as if you were to drop it down to a 15 year with the old interest rate you had. That's significantly lower. So now the term of your loan is 15 years. You're saving, oh, I don't know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 in interest. Come on. This is one of the many options that are available for you when you call upon Mario from the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Maybe you're like, Zane, uh, no, I'm not going to pay any more. Uh, I'm barely able to get a mortgage. I have a terrible credit score. That's okay. Run it by Mario. See if he can help you. 231-332-6505. You will not be let down. Thank you to the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Meanwhile, if you're growing indoors, Horizon Hydroponics, that's who you need to call upon. H-O-R-I-Z-E-N hydroponics.com. Shop online. And for orders $200 and more, you're going to get free shipping. Okay. $250. Did I say $200? $250 and more, you're going to get free shipping. Use the coupon code Zane Show at checkout. You'll save 10%. Or you can buy it online the same way I just said and pick it up in the store if you don't want it delivered to you. They got four locations, uh, two in West Michigan on Alpine and Grand Rapids and Byron Center. And then they've got one in Kalamazoo and Lansing for Horizon Hydroponics. Stand by. Oh, man. Okay. I start seeing the, um, uh, what do you call it? Notifications last night that uh, in the Pistons game, there was a massive brawl that broke out. All right. Let's get to that. It started with LeBron James. Which, uh, you know, I don't really care for LeBron James too much. And so, and I'm kind of a Pistons fan. Well, I mean, I I shouldn't say I'm a Pistons fan. I haven't watched uh, one game this year. But uh, I'm interested if this shit is going down. Okay, so let's get after it. LeBron is... uh, Uh, Right here, okay? He's in the corner. Now, he is going to throw an elbow that's going to catch this dude named Isaiah Washington, who is the big man for the Pistons. Isaiah Washington, he gets cut from the elbow, all right? And then all hell breaks loose. Check this out. Check this out. In theory. Oh, come on. All right. Off to a bad start. Hold on. Let me refresh. Okay. Bradley, but they're looking to get something. They're not going to give them. Watch the elbow. Right there. Did you see that? Did you see that damn elbow? Something in the way of shooting. Watch it again. See? This guy right here, it's kind of blurry. Right there. Now look at that freeze frame. That elbow, he's going to wind up and hit this poor dude right in the face. So oh! Maybe with Bradley, but they're looking to get something in the way of shooting so Ellington enters. Uh-oh, we got Isaiah Stewart and LeBron. I said, I said Isaiah Washington earlier. It's Isaiah Stewart. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Watch this. Keep your eyes on Stewart. Isaiah's not going away. They call technical fouls because they dusted up in the lane. This ain't over. Free throws. 
Isaiah's going after him. What? He's got to hold him back. Wow. I, did you catch that? The PA announcer. I forgot that guy's name. What's his name? Electrifying Mojo. Uh, Chumba Wumba. What the hell? Who is he again? Their PA announcer. Fans do not come out on the floor. Harkening back to the malice at the palace. They've got to hold him back. Wow. <laughs> okay, so now this dude, Isaiah. Isaiah Stewart, is gushing blood. Uh, uh, Cunningham here is holding him back, and he's like, motherfucker. So now it's not done. He's bleeding badly. He's, you can see why he is. LeBron's over here on the, to the right of your screen. They take Watch this guy. He may, go any, he may go after him again. He got hit up the side of the head. Look at it. It's like Barry Sanders. Holy shit. Sad. Oh. He's going to get himself in big trouble with the league. Especially you can't go after somebody. LeBron has a look on his face like, oh, fuck. This guy's going to kick my ass. This guy is, is pissed off. And, and, and after things have been somewhat quieted, and, but tell that to Isaiah. He's bleeding all over the place. This is Electrifying Mojo still urging them to stay in their seats. They've got to clean the floor up. They've got to, they've got to stop this game. Yep. <laughs> Don't do it. Get him, Mojo. I know it ain't Electrifying Mojo, but that's the only Detroit black DJ I can think of right now. I forget that. Oh, Mason. That's it. Mason. It's not Electrifying Mojo. Mason. We're going to get a replay here and see exactly what happened along the lane. Blah, ha, he can't see shit. That guy's blind as a bat. Okay, here you go. Watch this. Right here, trying folks. to rebound. And right there. Ooh. Oh, actually, it was his fist that hit him. LeBron James started it right there. He started it. Officials need to look at that. Oh, wow. Fucking James. James is a bitch. I don't know what's going on down here on the baseline. Players are heading down there. This is this uh, this is the only Pistons I have watched this year. This is the only thing I've watched from this team. It's the only thing I care about. Mason is like, oh, come on. We got to get ahead of this. The last time something like this happened, we know how this went down. We do not want to be like 20 years ago, or however long ago it was. Fans are throwing some objects on the floor, I guess. I'd be surprised if LeBron doesn't get ejected, and you know they're going to eject Isaiah yeah. Stewart. I don't know who else. This is going to take a while to sort out because it started, and then it looked like it was stopped, and then it started again, and then for a moment it quieted down, and then it started. And then as he ransom, and, and Isaiah Stewart got tangled up. It has to be sorted out now. He's still looking to get a piece of somebody. I restrain Ben Wallace. It take more than just a couple <laughs> people. Or Rick Mahorn. <laughs> Following that, during the altercation, two technical fouls were called on Isaiah Stewart, followed by a technical foul on Russ Westbrook. Yeah, they ended up throwing LeBron out, too. There's another angle of this that I want you to see. Um of LeBron from the, from the stands. Let's see here. Jesus. 
Again, why is that? I'm not interested in anything concerning the NBA unless it's something like this. Kyle says the Lions need to bring him on as a running back. Oh, for sure. That guy was on fire. Holy shit. I think LeBron might have been fucking scared. Jesus. Wow. All right. Pretty fantastic. Big fan. Big fan of that guy, Isaiah Stewart. Now I'm like interested. You see, you, all you have to do is have one guy get, get pissed off and it loses mind, and then that's how you make fans. Okay. Uh, we, were, uh, we were kind of going at it not uh, nearly as, uh, as angrily at paintball last night. We had a great paintball event, and we didn't have the biggest of numbers. We had 18, 16, no, 17 people. I can't get it right. 17 or 18 of you uh, playing paintball last night. And uh, it was cool because Andrea brought her, her son and all his pals. So they were one team. That was Team Young Bro. And then Gabe, the Honduran, showed up with all his Mexican friends. So um, none of them spoke English, okay? And the way it went, I'm not kidding you. Uh, Rick from TC was giving out the instructions, and uh, Caesar had to translate for Leo. He didn't speak any English. So he's trying to translate to, for these dudes. So we had Team Spanish speaking, Team Latino. And then uh, the rest of the crew uh, were divided up. There was one moment, and by the way, the, the Spanish speaking team, the Mexicans and the Hondurans, uh, they had they were in first or second going into the final match against my team. We I can't I don't know who was first or second, but whoever won this thing was gonna win the whole tournament for the night. And there's skin in the game because if your team wins, you get a free TC uh, TC paintball t shirt. So, you know, here we go. And so the final match is between us and the Spanish-speaking team, Team Latino. And uh, Rick announced it. And he goes, all right, Team Latino going against Zane's team. And what did I do? I turned around. I go, let's go, Trump. Let's, we're Team Trump. And they're like, oh, fuck you. And I'm like, get on your side of the law, you fucking bastards. It was great, man. And, man, we had a hell of a time, and they kicked our ass. They got that fiery temper, those uh, those Latinos, and they just rushed us. We were, I mean, it was terrible. We needed to be on horseback, like at the border wall. That's the only way this would have worked. But my God, they ended up kicking our ass, and they will be back. And yes, I busted out all these jokes with them. Good time. Uh, sexy voice Andrea was there. She was our one lady contestant. Kicked all manner of ass as usual. Holy crap. It was a rough day for me yesterday. This is what I mean by this. In reverse order. First of all, I thought I broke my nose. And it might have been one of the stupidest ways to possibly break your nose. But this is how it unfolded. Um, I actually worked at the radio station yesterday for a period of time. And when I got back, I was exhausted. Um, and Because of this illness, whatever. So I lay down. And I'm looking at my phone and then I, I'm falling asleep. So I'm going to set it down and I'm, I'm on my back holding it above my face. And I somehow managed to drop it and it tumbled out of my hand and hit the bridge of my nose. And it, it's made, it made that noise in my head and oh my God, I, it actually cracked. It made a crack sound just like that. And I, went, oh, oh, oh. I thought I broke my nose. And so it was so bad. You ever get punched in the nose? That's what it felt like. And I went, oh, and I had to uh, um, like wiggle it and it actually cracked. It made a crack sound. And I'm like, who shit. What the fuck just happened? Ooh, that was bad. Um, prior to that. At the radio station, because I had to do some freelance work at the radio station at iHeart. Um, make a trip to the boys' room. I'm, I'm doing some uh, work, and I said to the guy I'm working with, I go, hey, I got to hit the boys' room. Okay, great. So uh, this involves me sitting down. Okay, I'm sitting down taking care of business. Now, 
There used to be a guy that worked at the radio station. He doesn't work there anymore who didn't have legs. I'm not making it up. He didn't have legs and he would have prosthetics. Uh, And so um, they had to install a specific type of toilet seat on there so that the man could use the restroom. And it's way high up. So um, it's a peculiar thing. Um, you're, you're, you're quite, you're much higher than what you should be because it, the guy, if the guy ever had to take a dump, he would have to sit on the toilet. So anybody else can sit on it, but it's designed, it's capable, can handle him. Getting all sorts of Lieutenant Dan jokes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, it was not Lieutenant Dan. It was Lieutenant Phil. Well, anyway, he didn't work there anymore. Uh, in one of the recent bloodlettings, that was the end of him. Great guy, too, by the way. And, uh, well, they have not replaced the toilet seat. And this is bad. We need to get rid of this toilet seat because there's no one who works there who is minus any legs. And this is why we need to get rid of this fucking toilet seat. Because when you're on the toilet and it's a regular toilet seat, at least for me, my pecker hangs down to a point where if I'm just sitting there looking at my phone and going pee pee, the pee will go into the bowl. My, the, my penis tip is actually within the bowl. It actually might even touch the inside of the bowl. I can feel the coolness of the porcelain on the tip of my penis. But on this toilet, it doesn't. And my dick is not big enough to hang down. So it's essentially, if I pee, it's going to leave the toilet. But I haven't thought about that. And I'm looking at my phone and I'm peeing while I'm seated. And then um, I'm done and I take care of business and I look and my pants, I have pissed onto my pants, onto the back of my pants, an entire bladder of urine is, it's like I'm the lead singer of Brass Against and my pants are that guy's face. I've pissed all the way on the, on the pants and I'm like, what the fuck? None of the urine has gone into the toilet. It has just collected onto my denim and my underwear, and it goes all the way down, all the way down my ass. So I have to put on urine-soaked underwear and pants. What the fuck? There's nothing I can do. And I'm just sitting there in the toilet with my dick pointing straight out. (sighs) Oh, that was bad. Melissa says, is that better or worse than shitting your skin or pants? I don't know, man. I, man, I tell you what, this is so bad. And uh, the question, why were you sitting to pee? How can you miss that part of the story, you fucking moron? I just described to you without saying it explicitly that I was seated taking care of business. Of course it means I'm taking a dump. Do I have to spell it out for you, you fucking moron? I'm taking a big gnarly shit, and while I'm doing that, I had to pee. Yeah, I'm sitting to pee, you fucking twit. Jesus. Thank you, Nick. JD Babe 2001 whoever the fuck you are, how the fuck can you miss that? Jesus. Why were you sitting to pee? It's bad enough that I did it. You'd have to, how can you miss that part of the story? Well, anyway, that's what happened. So that was miserable. So I go walking back into the studio and there's this dude I'm working with. And I'm like, I don't have that much longer to, to, to be there. Um, so that, there was that. Um, ended up uh, getting the hell out of there, sitting in the seat of my car with uh, pants full of piss, driving home and ch- changing. Good thing you didn't have asparagus before that. Oh, that would have been terrible. Did you just piss your pants? It smells like your urine smells like asparagus. Oh, my God. So true. 
All right, couldn't wait to share that with you. You're the ones I thought of. I thought, ah, oh, this is terrible, but the audience is going to love this story. This podcast is not done each and every day. When I get done with this one, I do the Patreon. Check me out, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Eric Zane, all one word, and that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. If you like the free podcast, and then if the day is done and you have nothing else to listen to, I podcast more every single day. There's no ads in it. It's just me and you, me doing what I've done for the past three years. I put a new podcast up uh, Monday through Friday, a Patreon bonus podcast. I also do other shows like the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast every week. I do Smarter Than a Former Drug Dealer Trivia with Dale. I do um, the Insane Asylum on uh, for my uh, music-driven radio show, Northern Michigan's Q100. Not to mention the Lost Zane recordings, all of available for you. It's about 15 hours of content each and every week. Try it out for five bucks a month. See if you like it. And then if you really like it, you can convert it to a yearly for just uh, for savings of 10% off. Sorry, I described that weird. Irvine's Auto Repair Grand Rapids Hybrid. That's where the great food giveaway is going to be again this year. Please support the sponsors, as always. If you are in West Michigan, get your vehicles repaired at Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Their website is E-R, E-R, that is V-I-N-E-S, Irvine's.com, or call or text 616-532-6600. I need a drink. Hang on. The local sponsors keep the free podcast alive and well. Thank you. Affordable Limousine wants to remind you that they are hiring right now. Go to this website, buscareers.com, and fill out the form if, if you are an experienced driver with a Class B license with passenger endorsements, endorsement buscareers.com you could be driving for affordable limousine and party bus and finally thanks again to all of you who have reached out to frank the tank fuss after i told you to do that frank reached out to me this uh, past weekend and said i gotta say i'm pretty happy with the marketing um you know, you're a uh, very great bunch of people who support the sponsors. So if the phone didn't ring, he wouldn't be back. But I swear by this because I do it myself. I get my insurance in the marketplace. I need help when it comes to choosing that coverage. Frank's the guy. 616-914-4070. Open enrollment is now. You can take advantage of this. Medicare has enrollment going on right now till December 15. If you or someone you know or love is turning 65 or is 65 or they're getting Medicare right now, you need to do this. It's a free service. I can't stress this enough. Free. If you get insurance from your employer, it's not so easy as just sitting through a seminar and picking what you want. Call upon Frank to help you make those choices. 616-914-4070. Or you can go to the website buyinsurancehere.com. Excuse me. All right, I got another video I want to show you. All right. I got to make sure I got it. There's no sound on this one. This is... uh, Back to that whole mindset about how people are behaving more terrible these days with more opportunities for that terrible behavior to be caught on camera and for the world to see. Now, forget the legal ramifications, the scrutiny you're going to be under by employees, friends, family, things like that, the big bad internet machine. Just not worth it. 
This crazy bitch. Uh, she ordered a uh, thing of soup uh, that's called menudo soup, which, by the way, I didn't realize that soup was known as menudo. Uh, I thought menudo was a boy band from Mexico, but apparently it's a type of soup. In Temple, Texas, at a uh, restaurant known as Saul, hey, Eric, de Jalisco, or Jalisco, some crazy bitch ordered menudo. Well, it was really hot, and the lid melted a little bit. Now, I've ordered food before that the lid's gotten hot and melted. Now, when that happens, that doesn't mean that the lid turns liquid and the plastic goes into the container. It just means that it got a little hot and shrunk. You know, maybe there was a crack or something like that in it, and then you can see that it actually melted. That does happen. But I would never assume that it is now, the food is now toxic. I'd eat it, frankly. This stupid bitch um, was pissed off. So she had the food delivered to her, and then she called the uh, restaurant and said, look, hey, this is bullshit, man. She's like pitching a fit about it. Well, the lady who picks up the phone is like, well, all right, well, let me uh, bring it back, and I'll replace it. How does that sound? That's like the best. That's the only thing that can. You got to be fucking patient. I mean, you got to just take your time with people, especially these days. You can win so much favor because so many people are not patient. In this day and age, if you show any degree of patience, especially in the service industries, oh my God, you are going to make your server's day. But this stupid bitch does not do that. She gets pissed off. She's not happy. I don't know what the fuck she wanted. The lady on the other end of the phone was like, yeah, you don't, I mean, okay, bring it in and I'll, I'll replace it. That wasn't good enough. This crazy bitch brings the food back and then let's check out what happened. Okay, this is from the uh, surveillance video at the restaurant, Tyler, Texas. Watch this. Okay, here she is. She got an attitude, and uh, this lady, she's working the counter. She's like, oh, God, this is the one. And she, this chick here, crazy bitch, is with this skinny fucking dude, this crackhead. She's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You can tell she's just got a ton of attitude. She's pissed off, and then employees like, no, I don't think so. That isn't the way it was. No, 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 you're crazy. You're fat and ugly. And this chick says, yeah, well, look at this. You see, I didn't want this soup. And you know what? Uh, better here, I got a good idea. How about I give you some of this soup? I'll just, yeah, take that. And throws the soup right in this chick's face, and then they walk out. Oh, no. Holy shit. Look at this. This is premeditated. They knew exactly what they were doing. That guy didn't even seem surprised. Oh, my God. Well, okay. This is the mugshot of the bitch now, I think. I thought I had a picture of the mugshot somewhere. Okay. This is the TikTok video. I don't even know if I have sound here. I don't have sound. I'm screwed. Oops. Hold on a second. Before, I, of course, was offering her uh, refunds and trying to get her an alternate meal, a free meal, something. She did not want to hear it at all. All she wanted to do was yell and cuss, and she called me names and the kitchen staff names. I told her, ma'am, I can still help you. All I'm asking is that you do not yell and curse at me. And then she says, oh, no, honey, you haven't heard attitude yet, and I will talk to you any which way I fucking want. I said, no, ma'am, you will not, and I hung up the phone. A little while later, I get very busy with multiple customers. I'm checking out people that have to-go orders and people that are in the restaurant trying to check out and leave. 
The phone rings again and I answer it and I say, thank you for calling my job. Can you hold for just a moment, please? And she instantly says, no, I want to speak to a manager now and not the bitch that hung up on me. Oh, oh, oh I said, shit. Yes, I understand. I don't have anyone to pass the phone to right now. Can you please give me just a moment? The line just goes quiet. So I just put it on hold and put the phone down and continued what I was doing. It took me no more than 60 seconds to finish what I was doing and pick the phone back up. But by then she had already hung up. And then, as you saw, she had come into the restaurant. She still continued to curse and scream at me and tell me that she was not being rude to me until I was rude to her, which was really confusing because I was definitely not rude to her on the phone because I really did understand why she was upset. Keep in mind, she never once accepted or asked for refunds or free food or any of that. She did not care. All she wanted to do was complain. And then as you saw, I pulled my phone out and that's when I said, if you do not leave or calm down, I'm going to call the police. And she said, I don't give a fuck. I did not want to call the police. So I just locked my phone and put it down and said, ma'am, I can still help you. I just need you to not curse and yell at me. That is when she made the split decision to grab the hot menudo and throw it in my face. Now the soup was not as hot as it was when it was fresh, but it was still pretty warm. But if anything, the spices from our soup definitely affected me more than anything. It really felt like I had just been pepper sprayed. My eyes were burning, my nose was bleeding. Um, at first I thought the nosebleed was from my nose ring, but then I got a second nosebleed later on that night and ah. in both of my nostrils. Shit, did we eat that stuff? Yes, I called the police and yes, charges have already been filed. I really do appreciate all the love and support. Thank you guys so much. All I can ask now is that you refrain from threatening or harassing this woman. Because wow. Oh, you're a bigger person than me. I would have said, fuck that bitch. Everybody get her. Oh, my God. Can you imagine what would happen if sexy voice Andrea had that? If sexy voice Andrea was working at that restaurant? Oh. She wouldn't have had to, Andrea would not have had to go around the counter because it would have been like, you know, the Hulk just, just burst through it and just, oh God, I would have, it would have been so incredible to see a Cedar Springs ass kicking. Oh my God. Oh shit. Oh, that is, uh, that is, that is incredible. Kyle, did she tell the fat bitch no soup for you? Ah, yeah, I get it. Incredible boy, that, that, that's what I'm getting at here. The fact that we have such a great view of it too. What an idiot! All right, be thinking about asshole of the day. All right, there's one um, nominee right there, LeBron James. Um, he's a nominee. Michigan State for being so shitty. All right. <sighs> Q Anon Shaman. Jacob Chansley. You know, <sighs> taking a look at this picture, the, he looks to be a good looking dude. How can a good looking dude be such a fuckhead? QAnon Shaman gets 41 months in prison uh, for his role in the, uh, oh, whatever the fuck you want to call it, insurgency, insurrection. I hear that the most, insurrection. I don't even want to call it an insurrection or trying to overthrow the government because I maintain that if, if that bunch of uh, stooges and assholes actually did get into the Senate chamber with all of the uh, with all of Congress there and they just looked at him like yeah what what are you gonna do they would have turned around and just walked out because they're pussies okay they felt empowered because they hid I think they should have tried to kick their ass like actually had like Game of Thrones Battle of the Bastards women and men in suits and ties, Democrats and Republicans fighting 
with these truck nuts Trump supporters would have been great, okay? But they kind of pushed out, and, you know, it was just... I, I, I don't buy the term insurrection or overthrowing the government. I think it was just a group of rowdy assholes who needed their asses kicked. Now, make no mistake, I think anybody who uh, got a prison sentence uh, for this, they absolutely deserve that. You absolutely should deserve that, but, you know, this whole thing was weird. It would never have happened. would never have happened if they didn't decide. Here, here's my opinion on this. would never have happened, A, if they weren't stupid, uh, B, if Trump had never told them to do it, and uh, C, if Trump would have just accepted the election in the first place. That's why this all happened. You don't like it, tough shit. That's the truth, and you know it. And then I see folks are like, oh, man, people, Dirk would always tell me, oh, they let them in. It was, it was planned. It was staged. It's like, you are so full of shit. Dirk, God rest his soul. I don't even think he's part of the show anymore. Maybe he is. I don't know. I don't give a shit. He, the day that it happened, he sent me a link. Okay, this is what I, this is why, this is what you should always drive me nuts. He sent me a link that this guy right here, was in fact a BLM activist. And I'm like, no, he's not, dude. He's a QAnon dude. He's he's crazy. He's QAnon shaman. No. He's like leading Black Lives Matter or some fucking made up fairy tales. Like, you're full of shit, dude. Shut up. And then that was it. And then he got mad. Whatever. Got another fight. This idiot, QAnon shaman, expected Trump to give him a pardon. Ah, he wasn't going to do that. Trump doesn't want to hang with this piece of shit. Trump doesn't want anything to do with any of these maggots that stormed the Capitol. He is not interested in you in any way, shape, or form. Let that be known. He's li- That's a lie if you believe that he's your buddy. My God. The Justice Department asked for this dude, Jacob Chansley, to receive a harsh sentence to set an example. And he got it. 41 months in the joint for dressing up like an idiot. And I don't even think this guy, he wasn't like the one who walked through with the, with the zip ties wearing the stupid, um, uh, you know, tactical gear. He just walked in as like, Hey, how you doing? What's up? Yeah. He wasn't the guy who put his feet up on Pelosi's desk. No, he didn't walk out with Pelosi's podium. Ah, uh-uh. he just dressed up like a fuckhead. And now here he gets 41 months. Oh, my God. I'm, I mean, I don't care. I'm glad. Um, but Jesus. That is that. He was the flag bearer of the mob. Whew. For more than 30 minutes, Chansley spoke to the judge about the impact jail has had on him because he's been in the joint since then. <laughs> And the guilt he feels for breaking the law. Yeah, you're not so brave now, are you, motherfucker? Uh, He'll get credit for the time he's already served behind bars. He'll also have to pay $2,000, which I'm sure he doesn't have, for damage done to the Capitol building during the riot and will serve three years of supervised release at the end of his prison term. All right. The Rittenhouse verdict. You thought I was going to forget that, didn't you? You thought that I wasn't going to say a word about the Rittenhouse verdict. Okay. In my opinion, the law was upheld. It's kind of a wonky law, but the law was upheld. You got to realize that jury was uh, in a very controlled environment and they presented the evidence appropriately. They're asked to only judge the case on the evidence presented. And according to the law, it's legal, though it's uh, whatever that was, um, an uprising, a riot, or a a protest, whatever it is. It is legal to walk around on the street carrying that rifle. That was legal for him to do that. He wasn't doing anything wrong by doing that. Is that kid a stupid fuck? Absolutely. 
If uh, I had a 17-year-old kid that decided to go to a, uh, a protest and carry around a rifle, I would not allow that to happen. I'd use my old man's strength and manhandle him and lock him in a room. Would never happen. Whatever reason, Rittenhouse winds up there. Uh, you take all that stupid in one place, this was bound to happen. Okay? All you needed was one of those jokers there protesting, and they're assholes too, um, who's destroying the town of Kenosha to make a move on idiot holding a gun, and somebody's going to get shot. As soon as that happens, game on. They're going to try to get him to stop, so he's going to shoot again. So you have three people shot, two dead. That's it. This verdict, the only reason why it didn't result in a massive riot after he was found not guilty, which in my opinion is the appropriate decision based on the evidence presented and the law. If he had killed black people, it'd be all over. Holy fuck. This would be the worst thing ever. You add into the mix the Ahmad Arbery trial. <coughs> Excuse me. If those dumb fuck hillbillies that killed Ahmad Arbery are found not guilty, and I sure as shit hope that they aren't, Atlanta's going to burn. Motherfucker. Because what that's saying, forget law, forget right and wrong. People don't care. It's going to get ugly. I You got to hope and pray that the case is made appropriately and the evidence is scrutinized appropriately. And if these two are guilty, three are guilty that they're found guilty and announced. Okay. There, there isn't anything crazy going on. Any type of shenanigans you see from time to time convict these fuckers. I think they're guilty. My God, what an absolute shit show that is setting up right now. All right. The asshole of the day comes up in mere moments. Who is it going to be? Who could it be? Could be Michigan State. Could be LeBron. Could be QAnon Shaman. Could be Hot Soup Bitch. Who do you think? Before I get to that, though, thanks again to TC Paintball for hosting us yesterday. That was so much fun. Rick, you are the best. If you want to book a party at TC Paintball, don't hesitate. Yes, it's getting cold. You can still play outdoors if you got if you got daylight. It's not too cold. There's snow everywhere. Uh, it's actually even better because you're bundled up. It hurts less. But you got the indoor air ball uh, field. So you can do that at TC Paintball. Book an event. Uh, bachelor party, bachelorette party, group of the neighborhood uh, dads with their kids. Do it. A team building for the workplace. TCPaintballGR.com. Thank you so much to Rick and the folks over at TC Paintball. You guys do a great job. Bennett Flooring Installation. Thank you so much for making uh, our recipient happy for the Bennett Flooring uh, Great Flooring Giveaway. 616-318-0167. If you need flooring from Bennett Flooring Installation, that's 616-318-0167 or BennettFlooringInstallation.com. You can find them online. Reach out. They'll come to your uh, residence in and around West Michigan, measure, measure the place, let you know how much it's going to cost for you to have that flooring installed that you buy from Johnson's Carpet One. With uh, Kent, drop the E out of you, and off you go. Thank you, Bennett Flooring. And finally, go see a comedy show. Big Dick Donnie's Full House Comedy.com. Thank you very much. Check out who is appearing locally on their website, Full House Comedy.com, and uh, buy your tickets right there. And off you go to one of the many Full House Comedy locations in and around West Michigan. Tarantula Farmer suggests you come play Winter League at TC Paintball. Yeah, it's got to be Hot Soup Bitch. That's your winner. All right. 
for the uh, asshole of the day. Congratulations. You are the asshole of the day brought to you by TC Paintball and JM Synthetics. Yet another winner. I forgot to tell one story about paintball. That was uh, fantastic. In one match, uh, the Spanish-speaking team kicked my team's ass. And this dude by the name of Juan, and that's how he pronounces it, Juan, he shot me. He was hiding in a bunker or something like that, and I, and I like snuck around the corner and like point blank, he shot me twice. Like, oh, you fucker. Good job. The next match, um, we were combining and moving teams around, so I must have not paid attention, but I was making my way down the paintball field in the village, and I saw Juan, and he was exposed completely. So I lit him up like a Christmas tree, like rat-a-tat-tat all over him. And I shot the shit out of him, and I gave him one more for good measure right in the ass. I'm like, motherfucker, take that. And then he said the thing that made me feel bad. You're on my team. You're on my team. I'm like, oh, no, fuck, you're right. And I even said, I go, I got you, motherfucker. And he goes, you're on my team. I'm like, oh, no, I forgot we changed teams. I'm sorry, Juan. Oh, shit. And then this. We were going over the rules, standing in front of Rick, behind sexy voice Andrea as her son, and all his pals, like four or five guys. They're all like, uh, how old are they, Andrea? 11, 12, 13? I don't know their ages. What are their ages? That makes the story that much better. Rick's going over the rules. 14 and 15-year-old kids. And Rick goes, he's talking a million miles an hour. He goes, hey, and if your gun, if your gun makes this noise, it's going to sound like a fart. It's going to make, it's going to sound like a fart. If that happens, just shake the gun and then it'll, it'll work. And then the, the joke is made. Sounds like a queef. I think I might even have said it. Yeah, it sounds like a queef. <coughs> and one of the kids who Andrea thought was her son goes, I know what that is. And Andrea goes, oh no. Or was it you that said it? Who said it? I don't even remember. But she's all cringy because she thinks her son is like talking about hot queefs. No, I said it. I thought so. Now it wasn't. It wasn't Nick. It wasn't Nick who said said that. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine if we said, "Yeah, my mom does that all the time." I can always hear it in the other room. Oh no! Ah, shit! Fuck! That's gross. Okay. Have a good one, folks. Thank you so much. If you're on Twitch, please follow me. Follow, follow, follow. Oh, before we leave, you know what I'm going to do? We did this last time. Don't go anywhere yet because I'm going to send you to another show. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play an ad because the show's over. And I get like a handful of nickels when I do this. So humor me for a second. I'm going to play the ad. And then I'm going to send you to another show. The last show I sent you to, they were speaking Italian. Here we go. I'm going to run the ad. Not since flying reindeer have the holidays seen something so amazing. Just in time to make selfie-ready holiday hair easy. Introducing the do-it-all styling tools for glam holiday hair. The holidays are happier with glam hair. And the Not Doctor all-in-one dryer brushes from Conair makes it easy. Detangle, dry, and style in one step. No elf needed. The Not Doctor collection has a dryer brush for every hair type and style. The Pink Smoothing Paddle dryer brush has Flexalite bristles for painless detangling and high-performance power for quick styling and smooth, shiny results. And the purple dryer brush comes with a bonus volumizing attachment to boost lift and volume at the roots. It's perfect for salon blowouts at home. And since they're ideal for every hair type and length, they make great gifts for everyone on your list who wants beautiful hair without the hassles. Shop the Not Doctor dryer brushes at conair.com or at your favorite retailers now.